Hey everybody, I'm back from vacay and this will be the first video from back in the U.S. after being in Europe for a month. I've got a big list of stuff I want to talk about today and I've just jotted it down uh, roughly and I don't know that I'll get to everything, but uh, if I do, it'll be uh, correcting a question from Sophie Pozo 6 Viewer, thank you very much for letting me know that I had uh, misconstrued your question, uh, which she wants to know why the palace didn't release the bullying records of, regarding Megan. Uh, I also want to talk about Cassidy Hutchinson, uh, and the Trump uh, uh, January 6th panel results. Uh, she was an executive uh, assistant to Mark Meadows, and she spilled all the beans. Uh, number three, perhaps uh, Ukraine and Russia and bombing Kiev. Uh, number four, Ghislaine Maxwell got 20 years, so let's see what that has to say. Number uh, five, John Eastman. You know, he's the lawyer, environmental lawyer, who Trump wanted to put in charge of the, of the whole uh, DOJ shoot match as attorney general for the whole country when he's never prosecuted or been in court at all, ever. Uh, then uh, number six, uh, Roe v. Wade uh, reversed. And then number seven, um, I can't read my hand right. Oh, the coach who the Supreme Court says, yeah, you can pray in Texas. What if he'd been Muslim? Would it have been the same outcome? So we'll look at all that stuff, hopefully. So I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. And this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So yeah, that's a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, I've just got two decks of cards, maybe three that I'll use and um, and we'll go right off the bat. So yeah, so because of six, I'm so sorry I didn't uh, understand your question properly. All I had to do was read it, right? But anyway, so it says, why didn't the palace, <clears throat> I asked the question, will the palace release the bullying records? And so because wants to know why didn't they release them? Um, I may have kind of answered that in the previous video, but we'll, we'll, we'll pull the cards on it. And then uh, the second thing is uh, the January 6th panel uh, did a let an impromptu uh, rush kind of a review of Cassidy Hutchinson, who is an executive aide to Mark Meadows, chief of staff for the president of the United States. She was in the room and some of the stuff she revealed is just amazing. So I'm just going to pull some cards generally on that. Ukraine, uh, Russia bombing shopping malls. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell got 20 years. Uh, John Eastman, the environmental lawyer, working for the Department of Justice, that pushed the conspiracy theory that made Trump want to put him in charge of the uh, Department of Justice as the Attorney General for the United States, and the whole all the department heads of uh, Department of Justice said, we'll quit. Um, Roe versus Wade reversed uh, women's right to their uh, own bodies, even if the pregnancy uh, is determined would kill the woman in some states. They say, no, you should, she has to have the baby. And then um, number seven, uh, the coach in Texas, I'm, I'm just going to say it, if he were Muslim, would they have had the same result? I just don't think so. I'm for everybody, whether you're Jewish, Muslim, no faith, Christian, whatever it is, you uh, deserve to have your right to practice your religion as you see fit. But do you have the right to, when you're in a, in a position of influence, to do that uh, in a way, in a place, and, a, and an emotional high as it went after a game to influence other people. What about the, the people who were uh, not of the Christian faith who were uh, on that team? If there were some who, who uh, may have felt uh, pressured or left out or excluded because they didn't uh, feel uh, it was appropriate to pray. So we'll look at that stuff. Okay, so this is going to be a long video. I'm going to try to cover a lot of bases. I've got a list of stuff here that I want to get through. I need to prop this up off camera here so I can refer to it. Yeah, I think that'll work. 
and I got a bunch of cards here that I may or may not use. Um, uh, so we'll just see how it goes. Uh, the first is this Legrand uh, Circus and Side Show Tarot, which seems appropriate for some of this. Uh, I have the Mystical Medley's uh, Tarot, which is a fairly new addition to my collection, and uh, it's a fun deck to use. I have the Smithwaite uh, Tarot deck, the Centennial Edition. This is the most true to Pamela Coleman Smith's uh, interpretation of the cards uh, per her remit from uh, Wait. Uh, and so I have that one that I've been using on vacation. So you've seen this one a bit. And I have the mini uh, Rider weight uh, Tarot deck, which I also use on vacation, but I don't use it very often. So this is everything that I may pull from. I'm just going to keep them off to the side. And I think I'll start off. The first one's going to be Sofico's and the Palace. So I'm going to think I'll start off with that one. So Sofico's, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me and uh, letting me um, make the mistake of not understanding your question. I don't know what was wrong with me. I had a lot of stuff going on the, that day. I was trying to uh, uh, worry about getting packed, uh, getting ready to leave, and um, and uh, the flight home was uh, it was difficult. Uh, but uh, it wasn't canceled, so that was good because a lot of flights were canceled. And um, screaming, baby. I mean, literally screaming at the top of his lungs, baby, for the first two and a half, maybe three or more, actually, hours into the flight, just sitting a couple of rows in front of me, and the mother pretending like, eh, the baby's making noise? You, I, don't, I don't hear anything. You hear something? Jumping up and down, hanging over the seat, uh, looking at the passengers behind them. Just not nice. But let's cut that out of my mind. So this is going to be the palace. Why, why, why didn't the palace release the info? Why? Why, why didn't the palace release the info? But first, we're going to do a little meditation, a little bit longer than usual, because I haven't done the usual pre-meditation that I do before these cards, so I'm going to go through that. So here we go. There we go. So that was a little bit longer medication, meditation uh, than I usually um, indulge in, but I really needed uh, to kind of clear the air and get my head straight. So, yeah. Why didn't the palace release the information? Why didn't the palace release the information? I think I'm just going to do, let's do three cards and see how that comes out. So one, two, three. May get some more. We'll see how this looks. So three cards for why didn't the palace uh, release information about the bullying situation with Meghan Markle. First card up. Ah, so this is the Eight of Swords. You know, swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Eight of Swords is, uh, look, I mean, really trapped by all of that. Okay, feel like you can't make a move. But you know what we know about this card, especially in the context of a circus, is these swords are not a threat at all, even a little bit. They're coming out from the back of this uh, device and look like they've been thrown. And so this person who's in the middle um, looks like they've been in, in you know, mortal peril, but they haven't been. So the Eight of Swords, the first card to come out, why didn't the uh, palace release the uh, information about the bullying of Megan? And what we see here is a, is a woman who is the star of the show, presumably, is she the star of the show? Or is the person throwing the knives the star of the show? She's a key element of the show, uh, feeling uh, trapped uh, by truth, justice, rules, and law. Second card, okay, the Page of Swords. So again, swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. And the page is a very weak uh, messenger uh, of the royal court, okay? And they're getting ready to swallow uh, that uh, information, okay? And then the third card for Sophie Coase is the Knight of Coins. You know, coins are value uh, um, and worth 
and the knight is the one in the royal court who's going to fight for their value and their worth. So if I'm going to recap this, I'll say, <clears throat> it looks to me like, uh, why didn't the palace release the information regarding the Megan uh, bullying situation? There was a feeling of being trapped. And I think that was Megan. I think she had a feeling of being trapped behind all the rules uh, of the palace. But in fact, maybe she wasn't so trapped if she had just understood how things work there. Um, the Page of Swords is the palace uh, wanting to swallow that information, wanting to quell it, wanting to keep it uh, unimportant and not noticeable. And the final uh, outcome is still the palace, the Knight of Coins. They're going to fight for their value. Okay, and what they believe is right. And once the palace decides that this is the way it's going to be, then that's the bottom line. It doesn't change after that. So that's how how that. Why didn't they do it? Because maybe they felt that Megan just wasn't going along with the plan. She didn't understand how things work, and she wasn't in peril. Uh, that they want to keep this information uh, swallowed down, hidden, and uh, and in doing so, they're going to make sure that their opinion is the one that comes out on top. Okay, so the next one is uh, Trump, oh, Cassie Hutchinson. And you know, um, let's see, I think these cards will still be appropriate for this. So this is the January 6th committee. And they had, I just watched it, this is a Tuesday when I'm filming this for a Wednesday release. And so I watched that uh, here uh, from Seattle and um, fascinating. I mean, this is a woman who was in the room. So Cassidy Hutchinson, and the information for the January 6th committee, uh, what can the cards tell us about that? You know, I want to know, was it true? I mean, there's, she talked in there about Trump regularly throwing food, throwing plates, throwing dishes around in the Oval Office. At one point, walking in where a valet was having to wipe ketchup on the wall with a broken dish under it because Trump had just thrown it against the wall. And she says that she had, was knew that he had like pulled tablecloths off of tables and let it all just, you know, clatter around. Just, just an animal. So Cassidy Hutchinson, what can the cards tell us about maybe why she decided? And she is, describes herself as a, a lifelong card-carrying Republican, but I think not of the horrible variety that she was working for. So Cassidy Hudgens, and let's get to six cards for this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cassidy Hudgeson testifying before the January 6th panel committee. What can the cards tell us about that? The, I'm going to do this in a um, dyadic cross, six cards. So the first card out is a Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so the Wheel of Fortune uh, is telling us that things are kind of a crapshoot. When at the top of the wheel, everything's safe and everything's good. Uh, as you're coming down the wheel is when uh, things are a little more difficult. And then as you're coming back up the, the wheel is when your fortunes are on the rise again. So for the first card, the signifier card, as to uh, Kathy Hutchinson's um, uh, testimony before the January 6th panel is a wheel of fortune. I And they talked about in that hearing about how people believed that uh, they spoke to the uh, committee um, uh, behind the scenes saying that, um, you know, they were worried about the reputations. They were worried about how they would be treated. So this was a risk for her, she felt. She's a long, young woman. She's probably at the beginning of a, of a career. So you have to wonder what she thinks, how this will affect her career. The challenge to this, though, this this um, wheel of fortune, this uh, misgiving that she may have on this, you can see that these artists are all being tossed about on this wheel, hanging on for dear life, some of them. The uh, challenge for that with this Knight of Swords, again, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, and the Knight of Swords is the one who's going to fight for that. And uh, the, so the challenge to her perception that this is a crapshoot, her wheel of fortune, is that she felt like she needed to be that knight of swords, that knight of fighting for the truth. The base of this reading, uh, then, is the sun. Oh, yeah. So the base of all this is opening the windows, letting the sun shine in on exactly what was going on in that White House. The past of this reading, 
uh, with this three of coins. So this is the three of value. You see the three coins are right here at the top of the card. So the three of coins is, is um, uh, typically putting something together, building something for public display. And so you can see here that we've got someone up here uh, placing the coins up. We've got some other advisors down here kind of, uh, you know, watching the work, giving their opinion as to how this uh, might look or how it should go. And so in the past of this is this putting something together for public display. And this is where she was. That was in her position as this executive assistant, if I got the title correct, to Mark Meadows, who was the chief of staff, the boss, really, of everybody on, in in the White House. All the, so... That was in the past. Putting something together for public display, that's what her job was trying to do. And she's put that behind her. She says, it was a mess. Okay. We tried to get some things done. We tried to put some stuff together to make it better to uh, show to the public. And uh, But that's in the past. Let me tell you what was going on behind the scenes. In the sky of this reading, we have the nine of pentacles. And you can see these pinnacles right here, okay, all stacked up there. And the dynamic pinnacles is usually uh, depicted by someone very uh, uh, plush, very uh, sophisticated, having every um, um, uh, thing they need to make their life, uh, you know, uh, attractive. And with the latest diversion, this little uh, parrot here, only a rich person would have a parrot. You know, when it's such a, just a totally an upkeep, you know, it's not as contributing to your life other than your enjoyment. So in the sky of this, I think it's telling us that she perhaps perceives herself as being in a position, okay, of being able to give this information out, show her value, okay? The likely outcome of all of this regarding Kathy uh, uh, Cassidy, I'm sorry, Hutchinson, testifying uh, on television before the January 6th panel is, look at that, happy family, 10 of cups, emotion, compassion, worth, and wanting to display that familial value. And so that's what she's doing here. She's trying to bring some familial value back to the Republican Party, perhaps back to politics in general. So I think that's her reason for deciding to go ahead and testify. I like that. So the next uh, question I have here is uh, Ukraine, Russia bombs Kiev. Ukraine and Russia bombing Kiev. You know, I can't uh, talk about this with a set of cards uh, that's not serious. So I'm going to move over to the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, deck, the uh, Smith Weight Tarot. Because this is what started all. These are the cards that got the game going uh, for uh, tarot in, in this this era, anyway. So, ah, so clumsy. Um, you know, I have vision problems, and over the vacation, this eye, my right eye, which you see on the left side of the screen, I guess, but my right eye um, just really quit working altogether. If I close my left eye, all I see out of here is just fuzz. Uh, multicolored fuzz like someone's holding um like someone has smeared vaseline over that lens of my glasses and i hope it corrects i hope that um, some of the medicines i was taking on vacation or some of the stress or whatever is temporary or maybe it's a uh, it could be cataract which is fine because that can be removed and fixed uh but um so let's see the ukraine let's get back on track here ukraine 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 the Russians bombing shopping center. Bombing clearly an apartment complex. You know, what can the cards tell us about this latest horrific attack on what was a peaceful country? Okay, it'd be equivalent to uh, the United States deciding uh, we want Mexico, so let's go start uh, chipping away at its borders. Or we want Canada, so let's just go start uh, bombing uh, Quebec. Um, horrifying. So let's do a full Celtic cross for this one. Okay, so six cards. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then we'll need four more cards to finish off the Celtic cross. Uh, in the end. So the Signifier card for Russia 
bombing Kiev shopping center um, apartment complex. What's the signifier card for that? Well, it's the Knight of Wands. This is a plan. Wands are plans, actions, forward movement. And the Knight is the fighter of that royal suite. And so there's a plan. Russia has a plan. They've had a plan all along, and they're going to fight for it. The challenge to that is death. You know, death isn't usually death, but in this case, I think it's a little bit of actual death. Um, it's also, though, however, an end of a cycle, the complete end of something. So it could be that this, let's pray that this is true, because I did a little reading on, on um, this war while I was on vacay. And uh, so it could be that this, the challenge to Russia's plan is that this, the end is, is coming up here of this thing. The base of this reading for uh, Russia bombing shopping center, bombing uh, apartment complex, is a page of cups. So emotions, but with a surprise. And the page is just a messenger, okay? He's a messenger of the royal court. He's just, all he can do is says, listen, this is what I know. This is what I've been told. What do you think you want to do with it? And that's the base of this reading. So I'm not sure how that fits in, but let's give it a minute to soak in. And then uh, while we look at what's the past of this reading for Russia attacking uh, Kiev, the emperor. Well, it's, it's, it's Putin, obviously. So the past of this, is Putin. And I think what we're looking at here is he recognizes that his past, when he will be past, is coming up. I think there's a serious situation with his health, which could also involve this death card. Um, and the sky of this reading then is this five of swords, swords, truth, justice, rules, and law, and the five is an abuse of power. I mean, it's in the sky. All of this is based on this abuse of power, which uh, for me is Russia trying to decide, let's try to rebuild our empire. Putin saying, I want to go out as the guy who brought all these territories back uh, into the umbrella of, the, of Russia. And then the uh, challenge to all that, the likely outcome for all of this is a strength. Well, that is the challenge because Ukraine has the strength. They're going to come through this. I don't think they're going to be whole like they were before, but I think they're going to be better. So let's get four more cards on that for uh, the Russia bombing of shopping centers and uh, apartment complexes in Kiev specifically. Okay, four cards. The signifier of that very question is, is the world card, a complete cycle in the beginning of another cycle. And you know, this is similar to what I got in the, the last uh, video that I did, which you can look at for last Saturday. Uh, there was a death card, end of a cycle, and the world card, beginning and completion of a cycle. So what we have here as the signifier of this question, what about Russia and uh, bombing uh, these innocent uh, targets in, in Kiev, Ukraine, is that this is the end and the beginning of of something else coming up here. The environment that that's in then is moving out of troubled water. This is the six of swords, truth, justice, rules, and law moving out of troubled water. It could be um, that um, this is the giant leaving and making a mess before he goes to say, there, I've done that. Uh, the hopes and the fears for all of this uh, is this uh, nine of wands, wands, uh, plans, uh, motions forward. This knight is in, this uh, uh, figure is embattled uh, in this uh, card here, but he is going to go on. He's overcome these obstacles that are here. He's looking at it and he's saying, I've still got my staff. I've still got something here to work with and uh, I may be beat up, but I'm not done. Hopes and the fears. And then the final outcome for all of this is this King of Swords, truth, justice, rules, law. That's what swords are. And this is the King of Swords, and this is Ukraine. They're going to come back with the help of the world, and uh, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be pretty at first, and um, there's going to be more uh, sadness. So just to recap for uh, Russia bombing shopping centers, apartment complex, you start out with the Knight of Wands, a plan, okay, Russia's plan to get this thing done. They're not, the Knight's not going to give up. Uh, he's challenged by death actual death and the hard end of, of this cycle coming up. It's underscored by this Page of Cups. Okay, the Page of Cups is a compassionate surprise. Uh, the uh, past of this is the Emperor. That's Putin. He's on his way out. 
The sky this reading is an abuse of power. This is what they're fighting. This is what Ukraine is fighting this abuse of power and Russia is empowering, is throwing everything into this abuse of power. Uh, the likely outcome is strength, and that's the strength of Ukraine to hang on and to get through this. The uh, signifier card of that very question is the world card, which is actually, a, you know, a beginning of a whole new cycle, the end of something else and the beginning of something coming up. And then uh, the environment that it's in is the Six of Swords moving out of troubled water. Uh, it makes me think of the ports, too, that Russia has been trying to take. So perhaps Ukraine may be able to save some of their ports. Um, the uh, hopes and the fears is that they have the strength and they do have the strength to keep on going as in battle as they are. And the final outcome with this King of Swords, this is Ukraine saying we are in charge of our future and we're going to make it better. So that's what I've got for Ukraine in that respect. Now, the next one we want to talk about is Ghislaine uh, Maxwell. And uh, so this is the Jeffrey Epstein enabler uh, recruiting uh, young uh, girls and women to be sex uh, toys for the rich and famous. I don't think there's much that could be more uh, horrible than that. So I'm going to use this mystical medleys in uh, view of some of those women who are underage who may have still been watching cartoons. And this is that cool deck that unloads from the bottom. I'm going to put all these cards at the end of this video, so if, if you want to, you can see what they all are. Um, okay. Uh, this one here, I haven't used this deck, like I said, I only had one deck with me on vacation. So, ah, this has got Happy Squirrel and Sad Squirrel as some options in this deck. And, um, so we'll see how this goes. I've got to decide how or if I want to use those cards. So Ghislaine Maxwell, evil herself, you know? So turning uh, other women uh, in, um, enticing them with money, with trips, um, teaching them uh, the things that they needed to do to please uh, the men that were gonna be part of those um, encounters, not nice. So Ghislaine Maxwell, 20 years in prison, Ghislaine Maxwell, 20 years in prison. I guess I just want to know, is she going to stay there? Is she going to stay in prison? And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to include this happy squirrel and this sad squirrel uh, in this deck. There are extra cards that they give you, and so the interpretation that you use for them is pretty open. And um, so we'll use those in here. Ghislaine Maxwell, four cards. That's probably more, one more than what we need. But four cards. Ghislaine Maxwell, 20 years in prison. Uh, is that is that going to stick? Ghislaine Maxwell. What can the cards tell us about that situation? Okay, first up, signifier card. Ghislaine Maxwell, 20 years. The star. <clears throat> That's interesting. She was the star of that show. I mean, she was the one really making things happen uh, for that enterprise, if you want to call it. So, but the star also, for me, um, shines a light on, on darkness, okay? And it tries to find some sort of a balance. So let's leave that um, on the table for right now. The next card for Ghislaine Maxwell, 20 years in prison. The Three of Pentacles, building something for public display. Pentacles are value, worth, and I think what we've got here is we're speaking to the, the public has to be shown that there are consequences for these um, offenses. OK, and so we have the um, the uh, rule makers here trying to put something up and we have the um, the helper bees uh, standing by the side and uh, and making suggestions to how this might go. Ghislaine Maxwell, 20 years. We have the Eight of Cups, having to leave something behind. Cups are compassion, emotion, and the Eight of Cups is typically, I have to leave something behind that's of emotional value to me. And Ghislaine Maxwell is having to leave her life behind. And the final card in this uh, short pull for Ghislaine Maxwell 20 years is the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands, uh, and let's count them up here to make sure 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So ones are actions, plans, motions forward. And these are things poking up at this person with one uh, wand over here to fend them off with. And we can see this person is very uh, confused and scared and balancing on one foot on a tight wire with lots of things to go on. And so what this says to me for Ghislaine Maxwell is that um, light has been shown in the darkness. Um, the decision has been made to show the world that you will uh, have to answer for these uh, these uh, sort of crimes. She has to leave behind everything that was important to her uh, in the past, and uh, the rest of what she has to put up with is going to be difficult, and she's going to be doing a balancing act, and her life is not what it used to be. Yeah, it'll stick. So that's interesting. Now the next question I have here, John Eastman. Oh, so we'll use the same deck, this mystical melody medleys. John Eastman. So he was the environmental, I mean the top environmental lawyer in the land, but who decided that he could come up with this insane conspiracy theory, this way to cheat uh, the country of the true electors and install fake electors. He's the one who uh, spread uh, the word along with um, Rick Scott, I forget, some congressman, and, uh, and kept whispering in Trump's ear that we can do this, make me attorney general, and I'll do whatever you want. So John Eastman, you know, he's, uh, the FBI has raided his home. Uh, he has pled the fifth, I think over a hundred times to questions of the January 6th committee. And uh, all, and let me tell you something. This guy's a professor of law. So we, if you think that successful um, people of, of high rank uh, are good or virtuous or right just because of that, you're just wrong. Bad people advance all the time and will continue to do so. So don't be fooled by the um, figure of authority that makes you feel like Oh well, um, uh, yeah, they're they're that high up. They must be right. No, no. You need to challenge authority, and uh, and it, we, we all know when something's right. You know when something's correct. You know when you're doing the wrong thing. You do. John Eastman. Let's get uh, four cards for him. One, two, three, four. John Eastman, make me attorney general and I'll do whatever you want. Signifier card, first card up for that is the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups, I'm forgetting what the Seven of Cups is, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And seven is a transitional uh, number in all the tarot decks. And the cups are compassion, emotion, and uh, the seven is telling us that um, we've at a place here with kind of an illusion and delusion where we can kind of see that there's lots of choices that can be made here. And we can make the right choice, we can make the good choice, we can make the wrong choice. But the Seven of Cups is um, the, the first card to come up for uh, John Eastman. And it's just saying he looked at all the choices that he had to make, which he'd made so far in his life and it served him well, the choices that he'd made. But finally, he wanted to go to the top and he said, I'll take this cup. And it didn't seem to be the right one, did it? The next card for John Eastman is this Queen of Swords. You know, the Queen of Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Queen of Swords, this has to be Liz Cheney uh, up there uh, on that January 6th panel, the co-chair, if that's what she is, or the vice chair. And uh, so she's uh, holding her baby. Her baby is uh, the Constitution. Her baby is uh, Americanism. And she's wielding that truth, justice, rules, and law to protect that, okay? The next card, John Eastman, is this Ace of Cups. So the Ace of Cups, this is an interesting way this is depicted here because Cups, again, are emotion and compassion. The Ace of Cups is running over with emotion and compassion. But I want you to notice here that this cup is going to run empty. And this figure up here in the sky, this kind of ghostly uh, angel here, is surprised and looks to be putting his hands up to say, wait, hang on. Um, uh, we're going to use up all the emotion, all the compassion that we have. The final card for this is the Emperor. 
And the emperor for me in this case is going to be the United States. And the United States is saying, what I say goes. You pay attention to my constitution. You um, pay attention to what we expected to create in this uh, amazing uh, experiment that we call uh, the United States of America. So John Eastman, we've got uh, seven of cards, illusion and delusion. He thought he could pull out all of that illusion and delusion. He was telling people, in fact, you don't believe in what I'm telling you? That's okay. Just, just do it anyway and let the court sort it out later. Illusion and delusion. The uh, next card up for that is Liz Cheney as the Queen of Swords, protecting her baby, waving that truth, justice, rules, and law uh, to fend off uh, evil. The next card up with this Ace of Cups is uh, you know, cups are, are a cup of compassion, of emotion, but this Ace of Cups is going to run dry because it's all coming out and nothing's going in. And this angelic little ghost here seems to know that that's an issue. And then the final card with the Emperor, this is the United States of America. This is our Constitution saying, listen, I'll have the last word in this, and we will do what I tell you we're going to do. So that's how, how that looks to me. Now, the next thing we have up here is Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade. What cards will I use for that? Let's go. Let's go back to. Let's go back to this uh, Le Grand Circus and Sideshow Tarot for this one. So, Roe v. Wade, the uh, hard right leaning uh, Supreme Court, uh, five justices, and that opinion that Clarence Thomas put out. I mean, literally, uh, almost saying, you better watch out because we're coming for the rest of you. And um, I guess he just uh, seems to forget that the Constitution originally said, because of his own marriage to a white woman, the Constitution says all men are created equal at a time when women didn't have any rights to vote or even personhood almost. You know, you belonged to your husband. Um so either this is a clever way for him to get out of his marriage or, um, you know, these justices, do they just decide that we'll interpret right and wrong the way we see fit? So Roe v. Wade, I guess we want to know what's in the future for that. Let's take six cards and maybe a full Celtic cross, but definitely dyadic cross. Okay. Roe v. Wade, what can the cards tell us uh, for Roe v. Wade? Signifier card. And we start out with, what is this? This is the Three of Cups. Three of Cups is celebrations. So you've got three women up here uh, celebrating, riding on the back of this, this horse, who looks a little put out, okay? So women celebrating on the back of this horse. Well, if you take it two ways, you could take it to say that women who believe uh, in this being reversed, celebrating, or that we have a celebration for women uh, that's uh, it's working, they're riding it in. The challenge to the uh, Three of Cups, women celebrating, cups being emotion, compassion, is this Empress. You know, the Empress is almost like Mother Nature. You know, she is all and powerful, uh, all knowing. She has all the fruits of the world, of the earth at her disposal. So this Empress is, and all of this has been female energy. I have to say, I'm going to lean toward uh, women, women being empowered to decide how they're going to uh, deal with their issues of their body. Now, the base of this reading then is the Pope S, more female energy. And the Pope S is, is very intuitive. It almost gives you the uh, uh, authority to use your intuition uh, in place of, of a definite definition. But the Pope S has the knowledge, she has the power, she has a spiritual wherewithal to uh, make sure that we're moving in the correct direction. And the past of this reading, with this page of swords, you know, swords of truth, or, or um, I'm sorry, Swords are actions, uh, plans forward. The page is the very weakest of the of the court cards in this suit uh, for, uh, uh, not, I'm saying swords, but I mean uh, rods or wands, I'm sorry. But um, so the, uh, the page is the very weakest, and he's riding in on a great big elephant um, 
which kind of represents the Republican Party, but you can see this elephant is a little restrained by these chains and looking a little sad, okay? So the past of this reading is this page of wands riding in on perhaps a Republican elephant that's somewhat restrained, uh, maybe that needs to be restrained. On the, in the sky of this uh, reading, we have the Queen of Coins, you know, another female energy. This Queen of Coins is looking over the book. She's deciding where is the value in here? How do I tally this up? What is this worth in the general ledger? Okay, and uh, so that's what's in the sky. So I'm going to say female energy is going to take the day um, in this eventually. Uh, they're, they've been empowered in that they've been woken up. And then the likely outcome for this is that Ace of Coins, that, that nice chunk of of value that you're guaranteed that you're going to get. Let's do four more cards for this. So Roe v. Wade being uh, overturned. Uh, what can the cards tell us about that? Roe v. Wade. And so far we got lots of female energy uh, making the rounds here. The self of that very question about uh, female empowerment. Look at that. Truth, justice, rules of all law and this woman is swallowing them down she's taking control she says i'm going to be the uh the the one who uh decides what's going to happen with this truth justice rules and law so the three of uh swords the uh environment that that's in is death you take it two ways you can take this to be the death of the fetus or the end of of this uh, cycle of um, uh, right-wing extremism. You know, the uh, Three of Swords is also representative of a broken heart. Okay? So, death. Uh, the hopes and the fears for that is right here with this Knight of Coins, value. Coins are value. The Knight is the fighter of value. This is a very savvy looking fellow here. He's got something to sell. He wants your money in his pocket. And so the hopes, the fears of this is that those people who are just looking um, uh, to uh, protect their own value um, don't um, you know, come to the fore. And then the um, likely outcome of the whole thing, Roe v. Wade, is the fool. Well, this is a new journey. So what we've done here is we said what we had on the books so far was um, a permission for 50 years, but it wasn't codified. And so now we're going to see if our lawmakers can codify this and make it something, start off on a new journey, get uh, stand over the mouth of that lion and get things done. So that's what I got for that. Roe v. Wade, we've got women celebrating. We've got the Empress, all-knowing, all-powerful. We've got the Popes, more feminine energy with all the authority necessary and the knowledge and the savvy and the spiritual wherewithal. We've got the Page of Wands in the past, which is this Republican elephant carrying in this page who's the very weakest of the court guards with a message. And then we've got the Queen of Coins looking at the books carefully to decide how do we make sure this comes out correctly. We get all the value we can out of that, and that's what women are doing right now. And then the uh, likely outcome of this is that, yeah, there's going to be value here. It's solid, and I'm going to show you what it is. And then in the um, uh, very self of that question, we've got a broken heart for this truth, justice, rules, and law that's come down, but the women are swallowing that down and taking control. And it's in the environment of what? Death, which is uh, the end of of that cycle, which makes way for the beginning of perhaps uh, codifying uh, this, uh, these uh, protections. Uh, of here, in the hopes of the fears, we have the Knight of Coins, which is the fighter of the value. And we can hope that we get the men on our side to help, uh, on the women's side, to help fight for that value. And then the final outcome is a fool, which is a new journey, getting something started. And it's just at the beginning of the journey, so it's not going to be short. Okay, and then the last question I have here is for this coach Ugh. in Texas. My goodness. You know, what I have to say is that hopefully these, um, these very uh, in-your-face uh, folks with their religion um, are at least honest and not um, coming at us with their ideas from some dishonest faith that they're just misguided they're lambs that are lost okay i'm going to take for this the very smallest pack of cards for this coach 
okay, in Texas, and um, see what we get for that. Coach in Texas, what's going to be the result of this with this coach? What's going to be the thing that brings about some fairness? Um, like I said, if that was some some controversial faith, uh, uh, according to the United States standards, I guess you could say, or norms, if that was some controversial faith um, that had done that, if a, if if someone had spread out a towel, bend down and, and started to pray to whatever their God is uh, right after those games, you can't tell me that the um, the outcome would have been the same. So the coach in Texas, what can the cards tell us about that? Let's do six. Diet across. Coach in Texas, that whole issue. What can the cards uh, glean on that for us? First card up. Is the Eight of Pentacles value worth? Eight of Pentacles is practicing your craft until you get it right. Okay, so what does this mean? I'm not sure right now, but it's, it makes me think that in so many things in the world right now, we're at a point where we're having to scrape out the wounds and push aside these temporary fixes that we've had to get something perfect. The challenge to that. With this wheel of fortune, is yeah, it is a crapshoot. And uh, but if you don't uh, pr play the game, then you don't have a chance to win. The base of this reading for this coach in Texas is happy family. This is a uh, cups emotions, and the ten of cups is absolutely happy family. The past of this reading. Uh, with this Queen of Swords, Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, Law, the Queen, that feminine power, really wielding that sword, but it's in the past. The sky of this reading with this uh, Six of Cups wanting things the way they were. <coughs> hmm. Likely outcome, the lover's cards. Okay, a union, a true union, perhaps an oath being taken. I don't know what to make of this one. This one's got me a little confused. <coughs> the signifier card for this coach, or maybe it's actually for this situation, with this Eight of Pentacles, is telling us that there's work that needs to be done here. We need to get this perfected. The Wheel of Fortune is telling us this is just starting out, okay? We're just starting out on this journey. When you just start out, you run the risk of running into some difficulty, but then you've got to build back to a crescendo. The base of this reading is getting to happy family, getting to that emotional, compassionate uh, celebration, that generational uh, um, familial um, value that we need. The past of this reading with this Queen of Swords tell us that uh, this truth, justice, rules, and law, um, with the Queen of Swords being in the past, isn't as strong a decision as it could have been, but it's pretty darn uh, strong. And then the sky of this reading with the Six of Cups is compassion, emotion, wanting things the way they were. That's what's in the sky. People are trying to turn the, the clocks back to like a 1950s kind of America. That's what's in the sky. But in the final outcome, we have the lovers, which is finding that perfect match, that perfect union to get to um, the most fulfilling answer for everyone, the most caring and loving uh, way to move forward. So I hope that's uh, what that means. But that's what I've got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed the reading. Um, I'm glad to be back. Um, you know, sometimes you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And uh, I was looking forward to spending a month away in different countries. And what it uh, reinforced for me is that what we've got here is even with all the mess, even all the trouble that we're going through, all the controversy, all of the hardship, what we've got here is the best that there is out there. And I visited a lot of places. I went to a lot of cities. I uh, participated and rubbed elbows with a lot of people. And um, I couldn't wait to get back to the U.S.
Well, that was a longer video than I usually do. So let me know what you think about it. If you like those long videos, maybe I'll try to do more of those in the future. And uh, thanks for hanging with me for the vacay. I know there weren't very good videos. And thank you so much for continuing to watch. It means a lot to me. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So Le Grand Circus and Sideshow Tarot by Joe Lee. These are really terrific cards. They come in a very nice box. If you received them as a gift or gave them as a gift, you'd feel like, oh, that's a, that was a nice gift. And um, the cards themselves are really nice. Um, they're done in the style of sort of circus posters. And uh, the guidebook uh, is really a very nice little guidebook. This fellow, Joe Lee, uh, was a very interesting uh, person, or is a very interesting person. And uh, I want to find, there's a little bit here that talks about him. Um, but he was a circus performer. He went to the Clown College in Florida, which I'm from Florida, and I'm very well at the Clown College there uh, uh, that uh, you can go to to get a, a degree in that. And then uh, he's done other things in his life, and then once he decided uh, that he would create uh, tarot cards, he uh, designed these um, to be so very useful. They're easy to use. Um, the art on them is amazing, and if you know your right away system, you're not going to have a problem, you know, deciphering uh, what these cards are, are going to mean. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory and fun, fun, fun to look at. So, you know, I do this so that you can have a look at these cards. Uh, and, you know, if you're not a person who collects cards or looks at a bunch of tarot cards, otherwise you're only going to see the few cards that a reader pulls at a time. And uh, I think it's just you're missing out on a lot. So, you know, this uh, Le Grand uh, Circus Sideshow Tarot, I love using these. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, deck that I have now called Mystical Medleys, a vintage cartoon tarot. This is such a cool deck, and I've had it for a little while. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely new, but I've had it for maybe a couple, three weeks practicing with it. And uh, the box is amazing. It's a good, sturdy box. You'd expect uh, you got a nice uh, perfume, uh, perhaps, in a box like this. And this uh, is artwork by Gary Hall. And uh, this is uh, published, I presume, or distributed at least, by Sterling Ethos out of New York. Okay, very interesting minute what happens is this box opens from the bottom okay so you flip this open and then you have this uh, creature right here which I've forgotten the name but I'll see it in a minute because I'm gonna look at the guidebook and tell you about it and then bring up the example of it on my phone but uh, so this is how you open the box from the bottom that opens down this slides out and then now what you have is this inner uh, case with a very faint kind of watermark of this uh, animal on the front if you look inside the case, and I hope you can see it, uh, inside there is a little uh, star, which for me is temperance, okay? Or it could be the star card itself. It's got two cups, a cup in each hand, which is typical of the star card, finding that balance. And uh, so that's, I love it when they've gone to the trouble to include some little secret uh, treasure for you inside the box. Now, inside here, if you take these cards out, inside this box, we have the sun, okay? So the sun card, I hope you can see that too. Okay, and there's a little watermark on this side. There's none on the other side, and I'll show you why that's important. The other thing that comes with this card, uh, this deck, are two extra cards, Sad Squirrel and Happy Squirrel for divination. And the guidebook tells you how you would divine those, and uh, that brings us to uh, the guidebook. So again, this little creature is a very beautifully done kind of book. And um, so if you gave this as a gift or if you were getting it as a gift, you'd feel very uh, glad uh, that you got it. And it has a nice introduction here, which is speaking to um, Gary's um, um, inspirations uh, to come in, uh, into this uh uh, and it starts out like so many good stories, it all started with the devil. And that's what that uh, uh, animal uh, signifies here. Um, I've always been fascinated by magic, the cult, and the imagery of the tarot. I own several decks from the fully usable traditional ones to more modernistic, uh, modern artistic ones, and have always dreamed of creating my own in some way. Now, I want to find the name of this little devil here. And uh, so it's going to take me just a minute to read through this uh, because, gosh, I can't remember Baphomet. Okay, so the creature that we're looking at then is uh, the Baphomet. That's what this guy is. So if you put these together right here, you see that is the cartoonish uh, depiction of a Baphomet. And let me show you what a Baphomet is. Let's say define uh, Baphomet. And we'll get a picture here. 
So this is the Baphomet. And this is a, a deity that supposedly the um, the Knights of the Templar would have, um, I don't want to say worshipped, but as, had an occultic interest in. And so the first card that Gary Hall created was that uh, Baphomet. And then from that, the rest sprung. So let's see, how am I going to do the rest of this? Yeah. Um, now, the cards themselves are a good way. They're uh, easy to use. They fit well in your hand. But the fantastic thing is how beautiful these cards are. This artist, Gary Hall, has a kind of ropey uh, quality to his art. Kind of a, uh, a rubber hose kind of a, an effect if you look at like the arms and uh and so that's his uh, style. And, um, and so the cards are very interesting. It took a little bit of uh, studying them before I felt comfortable using them for divination. Okay, and There's no reason because they do pretty easily, uh, they're pretty recognizable as the Rider Waite system. But still, for whatever reason, maybe I was just so distracted by the artwork. Um, I spread the cards out like this so that uh, if you don't get to see a lot of cards, then at least you've seen them here. And uh, you can decide uh, if these are uh, cards that you like and would like to use. I was always curious to see more than just a few cards that a reader would uh, pull out during the presentation. So there we go. So this is one of my all-time favorite uh, decks. So this is the Smith Waite uh, Tarot Deck, the Centennial Edition. And um, there's two boxes here, and I'll explain what happened. Is uh, When I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck, um, I think, I think it was Amazon. I'm not 100% sure. But um, it wasn't clear that, that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you've watched some of my videos and watched me use these cards, uh, these cards are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, uh, Waite uh, came to agreements on for the way they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose in a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, a quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature. So we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of, so I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have, but, um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina. It's not real, you know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the, um, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing, and I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, 
So it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up, and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here, and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of the cards. Uh, and in truth, what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box, and uh, these cards uh, came in that box. But um, I got this first, and so I wanted to use the cards, so I opened it up, and oh, look at that. And I don't like that. This has to be tucked down in there. So there's a couple things that aren't perfect. But uh, so I took the cards out of here, opened them up, started using them, and then the other cards came, and I realized, oh, well, I can make this a complete set if I put these in here. What's in here? Of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in, if, uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I've just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the Tarot, Tarot of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh, Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book, and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are, these are actually postcards, okay? So these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story. So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I, ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the, the book explains all of this to you. Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And um, amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost a little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful. I use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some uh, examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you want to get in a, in, a, in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.